there is one thing that I'd like to share with all of you. Music was never meant to be kept to ourselves. And what are we making people listen to? Is it a melody? Is it a song? No. Songwriters, basically, what we are doing is giving people the purest expression of our hearts and our souls. If it is a song that you believe is meant to be heard by everyone, then it must be captured. And it can only be captured with the proper use of music technology. It completes the entire picture. Now, there are pros and cons in using, or you know, when you get into the, the habit of getting into music technology. I'd like to talk about the pros. Number one, with me, it allowed me to fearlessly venture into the unknown. It um, dared me to explore new treatments, not just for new songs, but for the old songs. I've been around for 27 years, so when people ask for certain songs, instead of giving it to them again and again, you use technology to rehash the song, to rearrange it, to make it sound different, but still keeping the whole essence or the, the basic um, feel of the song. And lastly, it brought out gifts in me I never knew I had. Like, for example, Things like that. That's a very, very basic, you know, something that I do. There, that would have been better to hear it that way. You're such a fan. It opens avenues to new expressions for me. This is what I do sometimes when I'm just out in the open on my own. I close my eyes, I look around me, and I just play. And I can look out there and I can just get inspired with one chord. And that's just two chords, but that I don't know what it is, but it moves me. That's what sound does with me. And technology plays a major role in that. So, some of you may ask, okay, we've heard everybody speak about technology, but what, Gary, Gary V, ano bang ginagamit mo? What, what exactly do you use to create these things? Um, you might have seen this as musicians, you might have seen it, pero you disregarded it as parang, oh my God, it's more things to memorize or more things to know. It's a DAW. Some of you know what this stands for. Digital Audio Workstation. Here are some of the other softwares that many other people use. There's Pro Tools. This is Pro Tools HD. There's Pro Tools M, the M Audio. This is Nuendo 5. This is probably the top of Steinberg. By the way, this company right here tied up with Yamaha. So if any of you are Yamaha fans or if you have a Yamaha keyboard, a lot of the language that they use there are it's probably also what they use in these software so that you can understand what the software is trying to tell you there's also cubase this is cubase 4 i know it's cubase 5 and that's the, how the interface looks like there's also cakewalk um sonar 8 a cakewalk for the roland users roland and cakewalk are tied up but the one i've fallen in love with and the one that i use is this one right here which is logic studio <laughs> that this digital audio workstation was one of the very first that introduced soft uh, plugins, software instruments. These are instruments, it's the sound of the instrument minus the instrument. It's the bass guitar without the bass. It's an electric guitar without the guitar. But it does sound like an electric guitar when you play it. This is how my interface looks like. What you're looking at right now is the setup for As One, the concert. Each color 
are, are audio files na hindi pwedeng gawin live ng band. So the band plays and everything else, like string patches or sometimes RPGated patches. RPGation is parang yung mga tipong runs na and you can't play that live and you're playing something else. But songwriters, you will encounter people working with these things. And you cannot anymore say, yeah, but I'm not into that. You will have to somehow get yourself and dip yourself in and then take in what you can in order to keep up. And I believe what has been shared with you with regard to technology is meant to help you. It's not meant to get you overwhelmed. The plugins can be quite overwhelming because that's how it looks like. I don't work with all of these plugins at the same time. I just present it like this because there they are. This is a synthesizer, um, very much like um, some of the synthesizers that you see around being used. That's another synthesizer. That's another synthesizer. Are you familiar with Earth, Wind, and Fire? Okay, some of you are saying yes just to please me. But there's a song called Let's Groove where the voice goes this plug-in right there on the far end is what can create that you record your vocal going down the boogie down down let's all and then you feed it into that and now you can create your down down you can create that then you have a sampler which is this one over here and a sampler is you can put in any sound you want. You can put in one clap. If I tell you all to clap, I can record you. Jimmy's good at that. And he'll put you into that sampler, put an effect. So instead of crack, it's now crack. Or you can put a delay to make it go crack. Or then you can put a filter sweep to make it go All of those things you can do with these things. Lastly, this is a drum sampler. It's got some, that, that, this one that I was playing a while ago is actually all from this thing here. Now, the thing is, I know that some of you are like, Teka Mona, oh God, do I have to know all of this? Besides, will it really help give birth to some of my ideas? Or some of you are like, wait, uh, please repeat from the top, please. Now stop. Okay, stop. Stop. I'd like to take you down memory lane, at least my memory lane, because it didn't start out like that for me. Kanina pa pinag-uusapan itong gadget na to. I'll call it a gadget because para medyo in pa rin ang dating. This is how it started out for me. That's right. The cassette. But hey, I didn't start out with one. I started with two. What I would do is I would record Anjali. My wife said that my first demo was um, uh, with all my, my voices because I didn't have any keyboards. I had nothing. I only had the idea in my head. So what I would do is I would record what I would call a beatbox then, which is very simple. On that tape. But the one I used was with two cassettes, two cassette players. So from one, I would now go to the other tape and I would run both tapes at the same time. And now it's the... With the... Now take note of the speed, okay? The tempo. The problem with tape is that as you keep recording, the tape gets stretched. So now, you're no longer singing in the same key, and it's no longer the same tempo. After all the tracks were done and submitted, because bumilis na talaga yung kanta, what came out was actually this one right here. That's my first upbeat number. That was You Got Me Working. And layo. It was so far from what I had in mind because instead of tan, tan, you know, it was more of like, tum, tan, 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 tan. Like, a, like a, you know, but because of that kind of process, that's what came out. <laughs> For me, it was one thing to have had the ideas in my head, but to know that I, that you can actually create what you hear, not only up here, but stuff that's generated from in here. Well, with me, it moved me to venture for deeper into music technology. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. And so began the journey. It started with the Roland Juno 106, some of the stuff that you can't play live. There's a song called Susudio by Phil Collins. 
And I had to record that somehow, but how hard to play that live. So I recorded it on my very first sequencer that would capture the notes I played. And it was this one, the Roland MSQ100. But news alert, news flash, you could not, these things, even if you pressed store or save, it wouldn't save into the machine. You had to save it on an external device. But at that time, hindi pa usong hard drive. So what did I save it on? Why, my cassette!